Hey party people, it's Lex from PDQ.com. I'm gonna take you through what's new in PDQ Deploy 18. Now, the best place to find out what's new is obviously you're gonna watch this video and I can spoon feed it to you, or you can click on what's new in this version right here. Help comes up and there you go, check it out. In the additions, that's what's new. Uh, I'm not gonna cover everything because you know things like target service and new system variables basically are carryovers from inventory so that the systems run similarly, but let's jump into what is new and pertinent to you guys. First of all, <clears throat> let's talk about auto downloads. I'm gonna go to the package library and check this out. Adobe Air, I'm gonna select this. A couple things I want you to notice. We now have file size. That's the file size for Adobe Air. When you download it, that's what's coming down, 11 megabytes. Also right here, you look, download selected as auto download. Wow, okay, check that out. So we're gonna go to preferences, options, preferences, go to auto download. Now you can enable or disable auto downloads. So it's up to you. Now, this is gonna come in, it's gonna be default enabled, which I think is good because, you know, if I download Chrome, or in this case, I'm gonna download Adobe Air, when a new one comes out, seven days later, it's going to download it automatically. Again, make my life easier. But if you want to, you can disable that. And when you save that, you'll notice, check it out. The download button is now selected as standard package. And again, if I put it back, there you go. Select as auto download. That being said, let's say I set the global default as auto downloads, but I want Adobe Air to be a standard package. I can right click on Adobe Air. Go to download selected as a standard auto download. So vice versa, if it's on standard to global, you can take it individual packages as an auto download. In this case, I just need it as a standard package. Boom, there we go. It is downloading Adobe Air as a standard package. All right, that's the first thing that's new. Let's talk about prioritizing your deployments. So to talk about deployments and the number of deployments you can do, because this all comes into play. We're gonna go to preferences and look at performance. So right here, concurrent targets per deployment is eight, and then total concurrent targets is 32. What that means is this, okay? If I deploy Chrome out to 100 machines, it'll do eight at a time of that Chrome download. If I do Chrome and then I shoot, let's say Firefox out right after it to all 100 machines, because of total concurrent targets, it'll do eight Chrome, it'll do eight Firefox, so on and so forth. So I, at this point I could do, you know, four different packages, do eight of each, okay? Now why I bring this up? Um, because of the video here, uh, I'm going to change this to four and five. And the reason being is I wanna show you that, okay, when you prioritize, you can exceed the concurrent targets per deployment, but you cannot exceed the total concurrent targets. So. If I have four running and I prioritize one, it'll actually take the next concurrent slot that's available up to five in this case. So we're doing that just because it's gonna run fast and I need to show you in the video. Don't do this to your settings, it's not good. Video only. All right, we'll minimize this and we're gonna go and deploy the new kind of DUR, which is better than our regular DUR. I'm gonna deploy once and We'll go select some targets, inventory. Uh, we'll just grab some computers from inventory. We'll say these guys through, I don't know, just grab like the top, I don't know, seven or eight of these guys. Give it an okay. Boom, nine targets, good to go. And uh, you'll notice right here, prioritize deployment. I'm not gonna use that right now. I'll show you that in a second. Deploy now. Here it is. My deployments are running. I've got one, two, three, four of them running. Now, let us say for kicks and giggles, I wanted Crucibot to be prioritized to run next. I go and right click and I go to prioritize target. Because that fifth one, that concurrent target was available, it just grabbed it and kicked it off. So now I've got five running. You know what? I now realize that I need um, get Swifty to be on, you know, prioritize. So I right click and I hit prioritize target. I have now exceeded the total concurrent targets by one. And so you'll notice these are now marked as queued in priority. So again, that is prioritizing um, individuals in a deployment. Now you can also, let's say I had four or five of these running, you could actually go in right, right here and prioritize the entire deployment. 
Speaking of which, let's just show you how that works. So I did a dir. We're gonna send a new package out. We're gonna deploy this. I'm gonna do this like three or four times. And I'm just gonna use, if you use the period when you select targets, it's just gonna deploy to your console. And I'm gonna send that out once. We'll do it again. And we'll send it out again. And this third time, what I'm going to do is we're gonna prioritize it from the deployment window. Okay, prioritize selected deployment or prioritize this deployment, deploy now. And boom, 55 started, right? So now you look 55, 54, queued, queued, but this guy now has um, the, the target in this deployment as priority. So that's the ways you can do it, right? So you can right click and pick individuals from a deployment. You can right click from here and do an entire deployment. Prioritize the deployment like I just did. There it is, straight up prioritized. And then right from the deployment window, you can prioritize it before you even hit deploy. So that is prioritizing, you know, your deployments. Just really cool, because think about it, you know, the big dog comes in and says, hey, you know, you just sent out Chrome to everybody and he's like, I need AutoCAD. So you can put that AutoCAD deployment on top and get your you know, important people taken care of, which is, you know, basically anytime I deploy something to myself, always first. Anyway, <laughs> now, I don't know if you guys noticed, when I was selecting targets, you notice things were a little bit different than normal. Let's just go back here. I'm gonna go to seven zip and we're gonna deploy once. You'll notice right here when I choose targets, I pick inventory, I have two options now. I can choose a computer or a collection. So if I go and I choose a computer from inventory, brings us up, I can just grab Allen Rails, right? Give it an okay, boom, there's Allen Rails. If I go in here and I do that same thing, except I choose a collection from the deployment window, it's a little bit different and I will show you, let's say seven zip old, it's at the moment I select this, it's gonna go and check with inventory who's in seven zip old and it will add them right here. So you'll notice these guys have been added individually. I hit deploy now and it's gonna deploy to these guys. Now let me show you this. We're gonna go make a new schedule. So I'm gonna click on seven zip, hit deploy, new schedule. Schedule comes up and again, this is seven zip. I'm just gonna show you the difference. Again, choosing targets, if you choose computers, like we did before, let's go say I'm gonna pick Allen Rails once more, right, Allen Rails. He gets added as a static. The difference here is this. Um, if I choose a collection, it's gonna add the collection, which is more of a dynamic selection. So you'll notice when I do this, it just doesn't add the machines that are in there. It adds the collection. And why it does this is, let's say I run this at 7 p.m. on Friday. As of 7 p.m. on Friday, it is gonna go at that moment, go check what's available in the seven zip old collection that I selected, load them at that point and take care of it. So it's more dynamic, we'll say, than just selecting computers. So once again, let me just show you, here's the deploy once. I selected seven zip old, it added the machines. In the schedule, I selected seven zip old, it added the collection. So, you know, again, in your schedules, use collections, dynamic collections are way better. Uh, takes a lot of the work off your hands, so. That is selecting targets. Um, let's jump over here and look at the uh, licensing window. We added billing and technical contact, which is great because you know now you know who's supposedly getting the emails when it comes time to renew and all your licensing in that. You can click the update the account information. It'll take you to the link on our webpage to do that. Also, renew subscription, same thing. It'll get you back to you know pdq.com so that you can renew your subscriptions and change your account information. Um, finally, or not finally, I guess the last couple of things to talk about would be um, logging. Let's talk about logging and then we'll talk about updates. So logging, if you go to options, preferences, preferences, of course, it's already open. Here we go, logging, right there. Send anonymous exception data to pdq.com. If you select this, again, it says send anonymous. It's going to strip out any particular information about you or your console that is, you know, pertinent and just send us the exception information. The exception was thrown. We get the information. We can log it. We can, you know, make changes. Ultimately, it's going to help us, you know, create a better product for you guys. So that's a good thing there. But if you just use that, you're not going to get any information back from us if an exception was thrown. So let me show you what that is. 
Now, love the programmers. They made it so I can actually uh, go up here and show you an exception. So I opened the About PDQ page and uh, made it through an exception. Oh, so let's imagine I was deploying my idea to DIR, right? So I'm going to submit this issue to PDQ.com. Obviously, I need to uh, tell them what I was doing. Did a DIR. And I need to make sure I put in a valid email address here, like mine, right? In fact, you probably want to put your email because I really don't want your exceptions information. But now the support ticket comes open, or the button here is available. I submit, it goes to PDQ, and you will get a response back from us. That's the difference. So again, here, submit a support issue. You'll get a response back at logging again. It's just anonymous data to us that we'll use to make the product better. Finally, let's talk about updates. We made some changes here. Again, options, preferences. If you go to alerts, here we go. We added, there's a couple of things we've changed. We've added a, you know, enable auto update check. I don't know why you wouldn't check this, but I guess if you don't want to get updates, take that check box out, we won't bother you. But for those of you who do want updates, check that box. We have the release channel and we have the beta channel. Let me explain the difference between the two. The release channel, okay, you'll get alerted when a new uh, production ready release has been, is ready for download and update. Okay, that means it's gone through the betas. It's, you know, past enough that to actually become a production run of PDQ deploy. Oh, by the way, this is also an inventory. Now the beta channel, okay, if you select this channel, you're going to get the beta, uh, the, um, what is it? The alerts that the beta is available for you to download. Okay, so you download it again. This is beta, guys. I want you to know, you know, you're going to get the bleeding edge, what we've done, all the new changes, that kind of thing before you get it in a production release. However, it's beta, so, you know, be judicious of whether you put it on a production machine or not. But the other thing to know about this is let's say, you know, you've got to, let's we'll say, 1803, which is the release that, uh, or the, the beta that is approved and, and promoted to a release. The release information will come out to those who are in the release channel, but because you've already got that version, there's no need to in, you know get an alert on that. You're already there. So again, that's the difference between the release and the beta channel. So again, you know, depending on where you say, I personally, this is a running production. I'm going to leave it in release. So, and that's pretty much it. I guess pretty much it's a lot. That's what's in PDQ Deploy 18. I just want to say all work and no play means you're not automating with PDQ Deploy and Inventory. So, you know, step up your game so, you know, you can play like I do. I'm Lex from PDQ.com. Thanks for that.